Okay, so here we go. Um, so, yeah, um, that was awkward. Because, <laughs> like, we ordered just, I think Zreikin wanted me to, like, open it with him. And it's like, yeah, but it's just like, you know, I wanted to have an interesting, I wanted an interesting, um, perspective with this just because like obviously um wanted to guess split this video up so like you know you get the portion with me then you get Zarekin's portion which his portion will be a lot shorter because that's how it tends to be so yeah um I, I already said what I said um so but I guess because I'm not really sure if I don't think I'm gonna do, like, obviously a review on this, just because it's nothing to review. Um, but, I guess, basically, this was initially supposed to get released at the same time. Like, this was actually supposed to get released by the end of September. It got delayed to December, for obvious reasons. But, I was actually kind of excited that there was a delay, because I was like, Oh shoot, does this mean that the movie soundtrack is gonna be included? And they distinctively say, we're not adding anything. And I got so upset because, my gosh, the movie soundtrack is amazing. Like, there are so much remixes or, like, movie renditions of, like, everyone's themes, essentially. And it's just, like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. <laughs> so, um... Yeah, as you guys can see, like this is the same size as the attached caliber. I might be repeating myself, and I apologize. I might be repeating stuff. I was actually going to film. Yes, I was going to actually film this on the camera, just because for consistency's sake with the page throughs. But because this, I don't know. <laughs> um, I'll admit, like there's this weird like. There's this weird line of like, okay, what's a page through and what's an unboxing? I realize I've had this wrong the entire time. My gosh. But I apologize for how yellow it looks too. But so it's like, here's the thing. It's like all of my like, you know, SNSD, um, album openings having categorized under page throughs but like everything else like that I've technically covered also like all of my like tokusatsu CDs and uh, and such are categorized under openings so it's just like Shouldn't these be con so like shouldn't like these ones on the second channel be considered or that were supposed to? Because <laughs> at this date they're still not released yet, even though they're done. Uh, like, <sighs> am I really gonna go through this effort? <laughs> like, technically, shouldn't like all of these be considered like? Shouldn't all of these be considered under, like, uh, openings, not page throughs? Because, like, what? 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 It's Mr. Mister. Mr. Mister is the only one that I've actually recorded so far that actually has a photo book. <laughs> it's like, okay, yes, this is a page through. I'm gonna have to dig more. <laughs> wow, well, ones I still have yet to record despite getting them two months ago. It's just like, now these ones are like, again, these are like examples of like ones I actually can call page throughs. Cause look, there's photos and such, and I can commentate on that because that's a thing I apparently do with page throughs. But like, 
but it's just like, do you guys consider these openings or do you consider them page throughs? Or like, what do you consider? I'm just, I'm just scrolling through this at this point, but it's just kind of like, I don't know at this point. <laughs> so it's just like, I personally just want to distinct them, but at the same time, it's just like, but these are essentially the same series, <laughs> it's just under a different name. So it's like, I don't know. <laughs> and then, these are the only other two I can actually bring out. But it's just like, you know, so it's like, those are considered page throughs, and yet we've covered these, not review, not review wise yet, but like we covered these, and I call them openings. <laughs> so it's just kind of like, I, or we call them unboxing and openings, so it's just kind of like, there's this weird like, dilemma of like, not dilemma, but it's just like, I know like no one cares about this at all, but it's just like, you know, technically it's just questionable like, okay, so like why are you releasing the same content that you put on the main channel, but just putting it under the second channel under a different name? That doesn't make sense. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Um, I'm gonna at least try to take this off and then like look at the inside and then I have to go do something. So, <laughs> obviously as you guys already seen already, here's the entire track list, which is just, it's still impressive, especially for the uh, soundtrack. This is pretty impressive. <laughs> so, um, let me just... <sighs> okay, so I did not like that. And like while I was tones raking, this is all you have to do. You just simply have to take this off. And I guess this light off too. Oh, there's tape down here, too. What the heck? <laughs> Why is there tape on one side? This is going to be really hard to put back together. <sighs> okay. <laughs> so. Oh. This is just. Okay. This is an OB. <laughs> Not an Obi, but it's just... It's just a... What's the smell? That's interesting. But... So it's just... A back... Piece. Obviously, if Zarykin was opening this, he would just throw that out, but obviously, you guys know me with CDs, I literally keep them in the packaging, because that's what you should do. <laughs> so, okay, so, I like the texture of this, definitely. That's interesting, for sure. The back, Hidden Intelligence. 2020 AVEX. AVEX. <laughs> Essentially, Japanese SM, <laughs> which I don't like. AVEX is not a good company for sure, but let's see this reveal.
Uh, obviously, I can't see my screen because I have that tinting screen protector. Which so that was not a good choice. Oh wow. Okay. <laughs> so okay, down here we have uh, the Karma Zero One C box. Then, like so, we got our three singles, which. Um, I personally just don't like the fact this is the case. Like, I'll talk about it a lot more when I actually do. Um, I actually come back with. So this is the case the CDs come in, and then here these they're just straight up the DVD. This is the things Riken was shooting for, which uh, they're kind of cheaply put in there. The Um, can I zoom out a bit more? Okay, so, I'll put it to the side. The Humagear headphones. Bluetooth headphones. Yeah, they're just kind of sloppily in there but other than that um again Zryken will over oh look at this when he comes back but obviously I'm just here whoops oh my gosh <laughs> I'm just here for the I'm gonna put this to the side for the actual CD content, so that's what we're going to take a look at after I come back and such. Okay, so this is going to be fun. We're going to be opening three CDs. <laughs> because opening one is not enough. So I'm going to open them in chronological order, which is the... Um, which is obviously... Um, Rewa, the first generation, the theme and insert best song collection. Thank gosh, they finally changed the name of that, and the TV original soundtrack. So, um, obviously, uh, typically, or obviously at this point, uh, the gosh, the winter uh, crossover movies are always the first soundtracks to get released. I'm not, I don't think physically, but they're like for sure always the first ones to get uh, released. Just because for so, that's how Apex works. Um, as you can see from the spine, like so, cover our rail with the first generation original soundtrack. And, oh, that's actually interesting. So this side we have it in yellow, and this side we have it in pink, obviously representing Geo and Zero One. I think the poster or the cover for Rare with the first generation is pretty interesting overall. It's pretty cinematic, I will say, because obviously, like, well, you got they got dirt on their faces, <laughs> and obviously you get another Ichigo and Ichigata, and then like you know you just get a destroyed town. I wouldn't say it's that devastating. I feel like they're making it too dramatic, but eh, I have nothing to comment. This was the last zero one thing I've ever watched. That was all the way back in May, <laughs> so. It seems like they actually have a pull tab thing. Which is interesting. And obviously with these ones, I'm not going to keep the plastic because there's no OB. If there was an OB, I would definitely keep it. But, um, like what? Or if there's an OB or... A sticker then I'll keep it but um, if there's nothing then I'll throw it out uh, I can't get this <laughs> So, 
so like obviously like or technically most people the reason why you would want to get these cds is for the sake of the toy uh, <laughs> but which is why for me especially i still need to at least pick up the build opening single but someone bought that <laughs> so I can't get it because <laughs> I just need those full bottles but like obviously x -Aid and Jill had their share of music or their opening singles which those ones I'm not going to bother picking up I really want to pick up Sabres, because Sabres is the first series in like five years. I actually like the opening. So, here it is. Oh, this is neat. Okay, so... Is this just one disc? Yeah, this is entirely one disc. Wow, that's jam-packed. Okay, press... Okay, so this is a jewel case. I don't know what that caption is saying so this is pretty neat oh <laughs> yeah that actually yeah that's pretty neat because they have the that's a good placement i'll give you that apex but i still despise you no matter what why don't you despise sm then because i have a soft spot for sm <laughs> so yeah so obviously you got the zero ones writer symbol and behind pink which i actually forgot to mention Alright, because I realized this when I put it back together. When it slides off. Can you guys hear that? That's good sound design. Why does this smell like glue? <laughs> like, that's what, that's what it smells like. The box smells like glue. <laughs> oh, that's fun. This is just... This is just blank boxes. I love that. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> there's Zero One's Writer Symbol on the side. And, you know, it repeats. Okay. Let's look at the booklet. Which I doubt would have much just because it's simply the cover. The back. There's actually... Okay. So, here are the lyrics for Another Daybreak. Again, how I prefer to have my lyrics, not paragraphs. Um, and then here are essentially the credits because they needed to like string this out somehow. Okay, so they actually, that's actually nice that they actually um, state which composer did what because obviously that's neat to have because I that's the thing I really love about uh, these uh, crossovers is that they actually get both composers together. Or, I don't know how long they've been doing that. But, like, they'll get both composers together to do, like, music. To do the music, and it's just amazing. Thanks for all Common Writer cast, fan, and staff, and fans. So, there's one cast, one staff, but... Hey, there's at least fans, because, you know, we know that there isn't any. And, again, they just have the track list, which, uh, I, I cannot, well, I can, <laughs> I, I can somewhat, well, I don't know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> uh, I guess what I have, just to make this more exciting, my favorite tracks out of this definitely is, uh, Track 40, no. I don't want to get the Track 32 covering Ichigata's theme. That's amazing. 
uh, I think it's track 44, uh, another Zero One fight. That track's amazing because that one's a that one's a movie rendition of Vulcan and Valkyrie's theme off of here of the original soundtrack. Honest, because obviously, in, because that one was the first. This is the first version to get released for their theme, so that one stuck with me the most. I just like the changes they did with it. Because listening to the original one, it sounds really plain when it gets to, like, the middle chorus. So, like, because, like, when it... Basically, you know, I don't know how to describe music. Because this version, they add, like, more instruments to it. But then, like, the original version doesn't have that. And I feel like the original version kind of goes on for too long. This one just cuts to the chase and such, so... Uh... Track 43, that one is simply Waz's theme, but just cut really shortened. Uh, I think this one's Grand Geo Battle or something like that, but that one, that theme is nice. Uh, that one's like the climactic, like, theme and such. Uh, another Daybreak, uh, I'll talk about here because this one i'm just gonna say right now is my least favorite out of the three but uh yeah i think that's essentially it for um Ray the first generation overall a really fantastic uh soundtrack the movie was the movie's fine i just think it's weird no I, I, not weird but like it's a good zero one movie but for it to be a crossover it <laughs> okay, so next up we got the cover zero one theme and insert best song collection. As I said before, thank gosh they finally changed the name. I was so sick of the name they kept with since X Aid. It was like the TV, the TV opening and insert song collection, and they just kept at it. It's like. Why? What happened to things like Gaia Music Arms or like Forest Music States and such? What happened to the clever titles? Why couldn't you do something? Well, Drives was literally like Kamen Rider Drive, Superhero Tyson GP, Kamen Rider Sango, and Kamen Rider Yongo Best Collection, <laughs> which I'm like, okay, that one's fine, but obviously because, you know. Ghost didn't have inserts, so they just, they didn't, they couldn't do a song collection. And then when x came around, they couldn't do, like, you know, because I was expecting something like, oh, they're going to do, like, x Music Gamer. No, they just went with this long title, and it's like, okay. And then Build, yeah, same with Build, I kind of had to excuse Build, because I'm like, oh, the... Build, they can't necessarily call it, like, music. Because Build doesn't have, like, a title. Because, like, Build's forms are... Or Build's forms are actually literally just referred to as forms. So, you can't necessarily, like, do, like, music form. Because that's not anything. And, like, at, at this point with Geo, it's just, like, it's going to be the same... It's going to be the same subtitle, isn't it? And... There it is. Because you can't just do music armor, because that doesn't make sense. <laughs> so. At build, and, at build and Geo, or Build and Geo, I gave up at that point. So I'm happy with Zero when they actually finally changed up the name. Even if it's very minimal, it's different. I love the album cover of this one. They actually put an effort they actually paid someone to go on Photoshop to actually do work. Not here, take a PNG, take this background, slap in some generic font, you're done. Like, look at this. They actually had to take a picture of Rising Hopper and put some filter on that. Then they had to take a side profile of Zero One Rising Hopper, add some, like, smoke... Add sm like some smoke PNG, and then you're done. Like, look, look at all of that dust and such. And look, they didn't even have to get the show logo. They had to like 
find some font that was on Photoshop, type in Common Rider 01, and then like put this at the lower end, and then you're done. I honestly don't know what this is trying to say. I think it's supposed to be like Common Rider 01 theme song and insert best song collection. I don't know, that's weird. Again, the title that we're already familiar with. Now here's where disappointment comes. The track list. <laughs> now, for some reason, they thought that the songs that we were essentially aware of already were not enough. So they had to literally add in, they essentially added in the track list from the Realize single and take the movie edition of Another Daybreak and cram it into this to make it 16. Why? <laughs> like, I, I don't understand why they felt so insecure about the amount of music they have. Because on it, we have four pointless tracks in here. Because it's just like, especially with, then you got the CD box. You have two of the same tracks. Because okay, you already have it. You have it twice. I don't need two movie editions of another daybreak. Why? <laughs> like, obviously I'm fine with, like, with the music that's exclusive to this, like, I'm fine with that, but it's just like, we did not need the TV size version, the movie edition, or realized, we did, nor the piano and acoustic guitar version, because it makes getting the single of this, of realized, entirely pointless. Unless you want to go for the progress key, then you're going to have those same exact songs again. So it's just like, I understand. If you, for some reason, did not want to pick up Realize, nor Rare of the First Generation, but still wanted those edits or renditions of Realize and Another Daybreak, this is perfect for you. However, if you got the CD box, which contained Rare of the First Generation, and if you're planning on shooting for the Realize single for the Progress key, this is entirely pointless. I know the Progress Key version only contains the TV size version, but my that still counts because it's just like, like this. This still applies for people that want that gotten like the CD DVD version or just the CD version of Realize. You're you got stuck. You're gonna be stuck with like three versions of these, like. What were you thinking, Avex? <laughs> like, like, honestly, 12 tracks is enough. It is. However, if they actually show it, I guess I'll go into as to why Avex, I guess, panicked with why they needed to load more music into this. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so this is literally okay. Yeah, I was right. Conrad Zero One theme song, theme and insert best song collection. I apologize if that's really dark. Okay. So this one's just black, and this one is literally Ray with the first generation. It's just that's now in black. This the booklet for this one seems to be somewhat thicker because it actually needs to contain lyrics <laughs> now like I'll actually say the, this is a, a good thing is that this is the first time in a while we actually did get the track we actually got the crossover like the winter movie ending because I think ever since X-Aid 
no, technically, ever since, yeah, ever since X8, they have been, like, just not including them. Okay, that's cool. They come with a, it comes with a CGI render of the, or a render of the, um, Grasshopper. And then again, we'll get the track list. Which is just, like, again, like, I was fine with half of these track. Like, I was fine with what they have, but then, like, because, like, I guess, like, the day they actually announced the track list, I was like, oh, shoot. And then, like, but then, like, I saw, like, you know, some Japanese, like, people just, like, saying, like, oh, so it's just filled with, like, remixes. And I was like, wait, what? Then I looked at it myself, I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> like, so, excuse me. So, obviously, we got Realize. Zero one, 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 zero one. It's ordered. They don't put in a thousand zero ones. So what the heck? Um, here's another daybreak again. <laughs> or this isn't the full one, so that's fine. I don't remember if another daybreak actually did get released physically, or was like a side, a side track with um or a B side with um realize. I don't think so. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so they were the lyrics for Find a New Life, which is just entirely in English. Which I actually like if I had to be honest, I actually like despite things being in English, I still don't understand it. <laughs> Because I haven't really listened to Find a New Life because we got Rising Sun. Uh, this one's my absolute favorite one because, you know, it's just one of those songs they didn't use. <laughs> okay, um, and then now is the right time. So yeah, Metal Cluster Hopper got shafted. <laughs> because Metal Cluster Hopper doesn't have any music for itself. <laughs> and the only other song we have, Human Gear Anthem, which I'm not really aware about because I haven't seen um, this episode. Okay, so now here are the credits for their respective songs. So, Realize, Another Daybreak. Humicure Anthem, and no, uh, find it. Oh, yeah, essentially the entire rest of the songs because they were actually just composed by like the easy thing, like the thing with the Zero One's uh inserts is the fact that uh, they're actually like directly the tracks, like directly the, the instrumentals. Or, like, directly the the background music. It's just that they added lyrics to it, so I thought that was interesting. And it makes a lot of sense as to why, essentially, the durations for them are really short. Because it's like, because you know what, Zero One is like, oh shoot, we're having inserts? And it's like, wait, we're, we're hearing Find a New Life, but it's not playing is just like honestly it's just uh, writers just been struggling after ghost of how to use inserts which honestly it's just like i personally don't mind just because it's like you know just appreciate the soundtrack and don't really bother with you know don't only listen to the music because it has words. <laughs> but, oh well. Um, although these instrumentals are actually like straight up instrumentals. It's not like you're act because obviously you're not going to get the uh, instrumentals off of here. Because it's like, because obviously these ones are more are harmonized. I, guess, I don't know. Like, what do you, it's not harmonized. It's whatever. They have like, I don't know the war. I don't know music, but 
Yeah, this one's just kind of my least favorite overall, just because of the stupid track list, or the stupid additions to the track list, because this easily could have just been 12 tracks, but they were like, okay, so this is three minutes, this is five minutes, these are two minutes, so this is six minutes, eight minutes, I think this one's two minutes also, so this is eight plus eight, that's 16, 16 times two, that's only like 22 minutes. <laughs> so I think they're like, we can't charge us for $30 for something that's like 30 minutes, or for like 22 minutes. And it's just, I don't know, why even bother? Especially with the, I feel like this is just repetitive too, because it's like another Daybreak in the movie edition, they're not nearly that different. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, like they're they're identical. So it's just, it's just pointless. Anyways, here's the thing that we're actually excited for: the Cover Zero One TV original soundtrack. Despite Zero Two being pictured, and I think that's the Ark and Humic Gears. Uh, TV original soundtrack. Wow, they have the Grasshopper from Metal Cluster Hopper for some reason. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, this is two disc, which is exciting. Wow, I actually ripped this one properly. Wow. Okay. Okay, so this is essentially the same thing as... This is the same exact thing as this. Like, why couldn't you just invert it? <laughs> like, I understand it's for consistency, but... And there's zero, or what's supposed to be zero two, despite them just not giving it zero two's writer symbol. I don't like doing that with this. It's really hard for me to actually push down and then like take off, I guess. Yeah, this is a really interesting. Okay, so there's the arc, because I don't think that's Zaya. Okay, so why is this another trifold? Gosh. <laughs> okay. So obviously, here we got the cover. You got the track list for disc one. And I guess here we have the credits. Yeah. Okay, then here we have the track list for disc two. Here we have comments from the composer. I'm. Yeah, okay, that's cool. They actually do mention that he did. Compose Ghost, which again I have that here because again Ghost is one of my favorite soundtracks. And Ghost was actually the series that actually made me care for them. Uh, yeah, they mentioned that he did Rare with the First, or they mentioned he did Ghost, Rare with the First Generation, and the Ghost movie. So, yeah. And these are the credits. Thanks for all Common Rider cast, staff, and fans. Oh yeah, and then apparently there's a remix version of Realize. <laughs> Like, it's instrumental, but...
but I'm like, was there ever a remix? <laughs> like, I don't think there was ever a remix for that song. Because obviously it's not included in here. So. Yeah. Um, I guess just going off of, you know, like, right with the first generation. My favorite tracks from disc one have to be, um, obviously Hybrid Rise, Shining Assault Hopper, which is track 15. Uh... Track 19, uh, I think it's, uh, I'll, I don't remember the exact phrase that Pua says, but it's, it's, it's essentially one of his themes of, like, I'll, I'll do it my own way. It has, like, I follow my own rules or something like that. Uh, track 21. Which, uh, that's Valkyrie's, uh, track, which I absolutely love. Uh, obviously there's Kanger, Hirobi Engine, and Sting Dystopia. Um, but just cause those ones I know a lot about. <laughs> but I really do like, uh, track 27, um, Jin Burning Falcon. Now, obviously I can be heavily discredited for this because obviously I haven't finished Zero One. I've only watched it up to episode 16. But I'm pretty sure Jin's theme here, like, I'm pretty sure the soundtrack has a bunch of unused music because, like, well, obviously, you, obviously Hybrid Rise, Shine Assault Hopper, that one went unused because, you know, Rising Sun is, like, Rising Sun is an unused track. So I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure Hybrid Rise... Shining Assault Hopper wasn't used. And I'm pretty sure Jin Burning Falcon wasn't used. Because they just kept, kept using the stock music for Jin. So, um... Yeah. Uh... Oh yeah, Rise Hopper. I think that is track... 13. Yeah, Rise Hopper is a pretty iconic, uh... It's pretty, I'll say it's a pretty iconic track from the show. Then disc two, I think that this is where get, things get interesting. Because um, they start with the Zaya stuff. No, the Zaya stuff is at, the Zaya stuff is already at the beginning. But I'll say this is where you get like Thousers stuff. So like, you know, like Thousers like main theme they play out for dramaticism. Thousand Destruction, copyrighted Th Zaya Enterprise. I believe that's what that's what it's supposed to be. I don't know. Uh, and then obviously you get uh, Tower Zero Two. Then you get uh, Track Eighteen. And then obviously Track Twenty is Henshin Zero Two. And then Twenty One is Zero Two Battle. But my absolute favorite track out of this disc obviously has to be. Track 22, Kamara Rampage Vulcan. That theme is just amazing. Again, like I'll say, like, uh, like I'm wrong about this. I'm pretty sure that track went unused. <laughs> so, uh, and then there's Arc, Kamara Arc Zero as track 24. And again, another, or I think. Track 28 is supposed to be Magia, and then track 29 is Raid Riser. I think this one might be Zetsum Riser, but I know track 29 is Raid Riser. Track 30 is also one of my favorites out of the uh, this disc, too. Uh, technically, it's messed up with Jinrai, but I think it's actually supposed to be pronounced as like Hirobi, Naki, Jin, and Ikazuchi because it's all separated out. So I think it's I love their theme so much. <laughs> that one I'm I know that was actually played. Oh my gosh, track 32. Hirobi and Jin. That that track's amazing. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that one actually did play in the show. But I really like that track so much. <laughs> especially uh, you know, moving on now. Like, especially with now I guess moving on to movie renditions. Okay, I guess this one's a different jewel case because it has it has to hold two different CDs and such, but um 
Yeah. So it really sucks, obviously, that they couldn't hold this out for the movie because the movie soundtrack is getting released physically in February. But obviously, I'm not going to pick it up because, you know, it's just like, who just picks up music for music? <laughs> so, uh, I would like to pick it up. Oh, yeah, it even says two disc. I would like to pick up the movie soundtrack for consistency, but, uh, but like what I said before, the movie soundtrack is phenomenal. Like, it's honestly just one of the best movie soundtracks we've gotten in years. <laughs> like, wow, they really, like, went full on in with the, because I love the movie. Like, I like Geo's music. I do. But, like, I wasn't, like, so, like, like, oh, yeah, about it. Like, I was like, yeah, this is this is good. Saber right now, I, obviously, I'm not watching the show, so I can't really get a feel of it. But, honestly, I think because I actually do like the opening and ending a lot more, I'm not too keen on its soundtrack. So it might be the first writer in five years where I actually don't really listen to the soundtrack. Um, trying to think back to like soundtracks from like X eight and on because Tenga that's when I actually did listen. Like I thought they were, like I don't know like I thought like the other movie soundtracks were all right at best like X eight was like. That was cool because it's like, okay, we got movie renditions off of Tattle Legacy's theme and, or technically, Tattle Legacy finally got his rendition of a theme, but it was just short because obviously like Tattle Legacy technically shares the same theme as Tattle Fantasy. Yeah. Okay. So it was nice to Tattle Fantasy finally, you know, Tattle... Legacy finally got its own theme, and then Hyper Muteki got a movie rendition. Like, essentially, obviously, the thing that you look forward to with the movie soundtracks is, like, the writer, like, the next writer cameo music. But well, obviously, for Zero One's case, because Zero One's summer movie became a winter movie, so they couldn't do that. Although, I thought, I think it would have been funny, and I, I would have actually looked forward to it. <laughs> Just to see, like, what... This composer would have done for her saber because that it just really sucks they couldn't do that like i i still think that they should have just thrown a saber cameo in there because it's just like why not um yeah so zero ones no not zero one so yeah that's because i would say like that track was the only like oh out of the ghosts movie like obviously everyone went crazy about like the x aid track because it's like oh my gosh who could tape it and such and it's just like after that then it's like no one really cared for it uh x8 i really like what they did like i really like the mo like the eerie feeling they did with build because obviously like builds cameo music and like builds like soundtrack don't line up at all but honestly i'm fine with that because like i'm fine with that because it I really like with how they interpreted Build, just because they try to make him like mysterious and eerie and such. Because they were obviously trying to set up Hasty Generations Final, which that soundtrack is amazing too. <laughs> I love Build's soundtrack. I really want to pick up the next CD box I actually want to pick up is Build's. Obviously, because it comes with the CD full bottle, but it's just like. Like, not that that was like necessary for me, but it's just like. Builds is like half the price of this one, obviously, because it only comes with a toy. This one literally came with Bluetooth headphones. So. Yeah, because I think the price for this is like. Uh, it's, yeah, it's like $170. So. I think these CD boxes are technically, they're typically $100, I believe. But then obviously because they were like, oh yeah, let's do headphones. Because obviously that makes sense. 
the price just shot up. <laughs> uh, Geo soundtrack, like, again, I liked it, but, um, it definitely wasn't, like, build standards. <laughs> and then, obviously, like, they shot it back up with Zero One because they got the ghost composer, so I'm really happy about that. So, I think that will have to do. Um... I want to tweet a stupid picture of all the music I have, and then people are going to be like, why did you have to put SNSD in it? Please stop integrating K-pop into our tokusatsu. Bye. <laughs> like, look at this. So, obviously, here are our... Here are the tokusatsu CDs I have, excluding two, which are the uh, two Kamara Girls CDs I have of Next Stage and Exploded Type C. Those are on my shelf, which I can't get because I was my brother's in the room. And it's if I do try to pull them out of my shelf, I feel like things are going to tumble. So um, we're just going to deal with Ghost and Zero One. And obviously, as you can see here, this is the entire K-pop side. So we literally started with Mr. Taxi and then Mr. Mr. And then we got Paparazzi for a price I still don't know how much I got it for. Then Run, Double, Run. Then we got The Boys. Then this is, like, the last three I've gotten. So, like, I haven't gotten... I didn't get an album in December. So I need to fix that. <laughs> so... Look at this music collection, it's it's building up pretty well. And it's like, you know, people are gonna be like, Power, we didn't come here for this. We didn't come here for like legal or like actual like legalization of music. We come pirate them. You could have just gotten these off the internet. Yeah. I already did with these. 